Wendy is a 67-year-old woman who's concerned about osteoporosis and maintaining her bone and muscle health as she ages. She was recently told that her vitamin D consumption is lower than the daily recommended intake. Her doctor recommended she start taking 600 international units of vitamin D daily. They also spoke about Wendy continuing to spend time outdoors during the day and adjusting her diet to include more oily fish into her weekly meal plans. Vitamin D plays an important role in many functions of your body, including the development and calcification of bones. You may have heard it referred to as the sunshine vitamin because it's created in your skin in response to direct sunlight. The amount of vitamin D created can be hindered by a variety of factors, including cloud cover, time of day, and smog. Vitamin D is also found in small amounts in oily fish, such as mackerel, sardines, salmon, trout, and tuna, as well as eggs and fortified milk. Getting a healthy daily dose of vitamin D can be challenging and is a common problem for many people, particularly older adults. Supplements to boost vitamin D levels are often used. In fact, it's estimated that about a third of Canadians take some kind of supplement that contains vitamin D. We've asked Dr. Alexandra Papianu to talk about the evidence surrounding vitamin D. Dr. Papianu is a professor in the Department of Medicine and the lead investigator for the Long-Term Care Ontario Osteoporosis Strategy. Let's uh, dive right in there. Uh, what exactly is vitamin D and uh, where, where do you get it from? Uh, so vitamin D is one of our essential vitamins that the body needs. It comes it, from the sun and it's converted in both the skin and kidney to what the body needs. Um, it also comes from food sources, so such as uh, eggs, the egg yolk, fatty fishes, and it's often in fortified foods. Of the foods, are there any sort of uh, really big ticket items in terms of what would be the best food sources for it? Yeah, so that's a very great question. So typically our milk products, such as uh, have more fortified uh, uh, vitamin D in them. We now have orange juice that's fortified. Um, as well, the fatty fish is really high yield. It seems like a lot of people wind up uh, taking supplements, like buying vitamin D as vitamins. Uh, is the concentration in, in those kind of supplements uh, much higher than the food, or could you get everything you need from, from food? People in the uh, north, so Boston and Northern, including much of Canada, are often vitamin D deficient at many ages. So we have to make a little more because we don't get as much sun. And so we have to make a little more effort to, to think about including vitamin D rich foods in our diet. So it, it does seem like vitamin D is uh, has been in the news uh, quite a bit. What what's all the hype about about vitamin D and and why is it so important? Exponentially in the research world, we've seen so many studies about vitamin D being the wonder drug. And you say, well, why is that so? How can it impact and prevent so many diseases from COVID to depression to heart disease? And to date, vitamin D alone does not prevent any of these diseases, nor is it effective in treating them alone. So why is vitamin D showing a signal in so many diseases is that all many of our cells in our bodies have receptors. So our cells have a place where the vitamin D can go and sit. And so it's involved in much of the cell function in our body. And that's why it's so important. If, if you had to say, you know, certain things, there's more evidence than others in terms of the role for vitamin D. For example, the, the role of vitamin D in bone metabolism is, you know, more proven, isn't it, than some of these other uh, conditions? So really, for sure, we know that vitamin D and all the, um, when you're really vitamin D deficient, that's the um, 
disease that's called rickets that was found when people um, were not getting any vitamin D. Um, and so we know that people who really have very little vitamin D will have soft bones. Now in osteoporosis, osteoporosis is a bit of a different disease. We know you need vitamin D for calcium to work. And especially if you're on osteoporosis medications. So it really play, they work hand in hand. Now, if your people will often ask their family physicians, should I be taking vitamin D and calcium to prevent osteoporosis? And recent research have said, has found that we shouldn't be using it in everybody, but we should be getting adequate, the recommended national guidelines. So most countries for adults over 50 will say that you need about 1200 milligrams of calcium from your diet for bone health and vitamin D, you need at least 600. If you have osteoporosis, the research has said that you need between 800 to 1,000. So uh, it sounds like bone health is pretty well established in terms of vitamin D can be an important, you know, ensuring that you're getting enough vitamin D is important for bone health. How would I know if my vitamin D is too low? It sounds like in uh, Canada, where we may have a little bit less sunlight than some of the other uh, latitudes, many people have low B12, uh, vitamin Ds, but how would I know? Great question. And for a while, um, we really had include health, increased healthcare costs because so many people were asking for a vitamin D level. And in Canada, it can be quite an expensive test. So what we've said for most people over 50, unless um, you have osteoporosis, it may or may not be covered by your government plan and you may have to purchase the cost. Um, most people over 50 can assume that they're vitamin D deficient if you're living in the North. And overall, uh, how effective is vitamin D supplementation? Is, is there um, a reasonable body of, of scientific evidence that says yeah. that actually if you take uh, vitamin D supplements or you uh, eat your way to a normal vitamin D level, uh, that that is going to be beneficial? So there are some diseases that affect vitamin D absorption. So things like ulcerative colitis, if you have a problem absorbing vitamins, um, it's fat soluble. So that's often why it's in fatty foods. So you're often taking it with, with, with foods. Um, so we know that taking 800 to 1000 daily for three months, most people will be, their levels will come up to a range that you need for great muscle and bone function. Now, like many things in medicine, more is not better. Greater than 4,000 a day can be associated with high levels of cal um, calcium in your blood, can be cause kidney stones, and there's some signals that it may be linked to cancer. So like many things, just because you can buy it at the health food store doesn't necessarily make it safe. You have to really consult. And your pharmacist is actually a great resource um, if you have questions around vitamins. So this is this is one of the vitamins because some with some vitamins, if you take too much of it, your body just doesn't absorb it. It sounds like with vitamin D, there's a window that you want to be in. Uh, a range, like a healthy range to supplement your vitamin D. But if you go above it, you may run into side effects. It's not just that it wouldn't get absorbed. You could, you could have some problems with vitamin D excess. Yes. And like so many things, our bodies with dietary sources gets rid of it. So if you take too much calcium from your diet, most people will get rid of it. But if you take too much, say calcium through supplements, um, your body may not necessarily get rid of it. Same with vitamin A. And vitamin D, yeah. So, vitamin D. But really, it's, I think it's the same with uh, those, all of those, what we call the fat-soluble vitamins, isn't it? Um, That's right. So, yeah. so you, you should be cautious with supplementing uh, vitamin A, D, E, and K. 
that you don't take too much. So uh, returning to our uh, patient in this uh, scenario, uh, Wendy, uh, it sounds like she's not necessarily run into problems uh, yet, but she's anxious uh, to avoid issues like osteoporosis and wants to optimize her bone health. Um, what recommendations uh, would you have? It sounds like her doctor prescribed her 600 international units uh, a day. Does that sound fine? And what else would you recommend for her? So I'd also recommend um, uh, making sure you take a look at your your multivitamins. If you you don't not that I'm recommending you need them, but just be aware that a lot of them have a lot of different vitamin D or calcium added. And would you consider inflicting cod liver oil on when? <laughs> 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 so it's interesting how it's become. Um, I think most people can get vitamin D either from uh, their diet through a multivitamin or just plain vitamin D if you need it, if you have osteoporosis, say, for instance. Cod liver oil has, um, we kind of shifted away from that. We used it initially for rickets. doesn't taste so good as Dr. Levinson mentioned, <laughs> um, ha can have high vitamin A as well. So some people will not absorb the pill form of vitamin D. They'll get a better result with the liquid if they have absorption problems. So uh, bottom line, Wendy will probably benefit from some vitamin D supplementation, but if she's cognizant about the amount in her diet, uses some of the calculators just to make sure that she's getting uh, good amounts of the vitamin in her food, uh, she may be good with just a combination of uh, some supplementation and uh, attention to diet and uh, I guess exercise and the other things that are also good for bone health. I should clarify that all of our research to date in primary care has shown that we are not recommending everybody take calcium and D in pill form if you're over 50 to prevent osteoporosis. There has, or fractures, there's been very little evidence. It's really in people who are higher risk, may have a family history, um, may be a smoker, um, or have osteoporosis. But having said that, everybody should try and get the recommended amount. So there are some people that have a more substantial vitamin D deficiency. Can you say a little bit about that? And uh, what would some of the recommendations be around uh, those conditions? We've started seeing there's been a lot of interest because in COVID we've, sound, we've seen some people with very low vitamin D levels. But we know people who are frail, who are older, who are housebound or in nursing home, or who are quite sick with other diseases, um, so will often have very low vitamin D levels. And in those people, vitamin D seems to make a difference. But those are very, um, the housebound, as I said, those in long-term care, that's the group that we've seen the most uh, of the evidence with the really low levels. And basically, and, and I would say this is similar with some of the other vitamins. If there's a true vitamin deficiency and you can measure it, uh, then supplementation is, is much more important really.